Let's review what we know so far, and let's see if we can come to some conclusions. We studied the Great Pyramid. King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid has two shafts. North shaft points to Thuban. South shaft points to the belt star of Orion. Constellation Orion is Osiris. Star Sirius is Isis. So in the King's Chamber, the line that actually, it's actually a tunnel that goes right out of, through, right through all the stone, points straight up to Thuban, which is in the tail of Draco. And the south chamber points to the belt of Orion, which is Osiris. So we have here a connection between Thuban, 4000 BC, North Star, Orion, Osiris, the Savior. In the Queens, we have the south shaft pointing to Sirius, which represents Isis, the wife of uh, Osiris. And we have the other one pointing to the Little Dipper. Not to the North Star, unfortunately, because the North Star is up here, the Polaris North Star. But to this constellation in general. South shaft of the Queen's Chamber pointed to Sirius, the star of Isis, the north shaft of the Queen's Chamber, pointed to the Little Dipper, the star group, which will hold the new North Star. So we have the idea of Old North Star, Thuban, new North Star. And we have the Queen's Chamber, representing Isis, representing the Mother Goddess, representing Mary, representing Eve, representing the female who's going to give birth to the seed of the woman, and pointing to the star group, which will hold the new North Star. So we have North Star to North Star idea. The Eye of Horus was eaten by Osiris in order to give him a soul and review and revive him to become the judge of the dead. The god Kahoali'i, this is for the Makahiki festival in Hawaii, spends a night in an upright chamber, eats the eye of an alkafish and a human eyeball at the end of the Makahiki festival honoring Lono. Eating of the eye, both Lono and Osiris. What do uh, Lono and Osiris have in common? They both have a casket in common. Remember that Osiris was placed into a casket and the 72 conspirators sealed him in and killed him. And Kaholi, he spends a night in an upright chamber. So what does the chamber and the casket have to do with anything? Well, for one, it seems to have to do with death. And I would say, if I was going to say what the casket motif points to, in terms of the saber, it points to a tomb. Tomb. The Dejed column was the representation of Osiris within the tree, which was cut into a column for the palace of the king of Byblos. The four cross sections are his vertebrae. One, two, three, four. A column is a tree shorn of its branches, as was the cross of Christ. Lono Makua was represented as a pole and a cross in ancient Hawaii during the Makahiki festival. So if there is a second distinguishing factor, it would be a tree but especially a tree shorn of its branches. So let's just for that, for now, call that a cross. The dead Osiris beneath the eye of Horus and the eye of Ra during the solar eclipse. Eye of Horus, eye of Ra. Jesus died upon a cross during the solar eclipse and an earthquake. So let's just write Eclipse. Horus, the son of Osiris, as a child with a side hairlock 
and finger to his lips within the Ouroboros serpent circle. The Ouroboros is a serpent that holds its own tail in its mouth. It's a represent, uh, representation of eternity and continuity. Horus' is Egyptian name, Heru, may be the origin of the word hero. As you remember from the Hero of a Thousand Faces, the monomyth, Joseph Campbell. What if this Hero of a Thousand Faces that Joseph Campbell is talking about is a disguised form of Heru, or the Savior? What if it's actually uh, the basic Savior motif implanted in stories all over the world? Uh, we studied the monomyth last, last time in the last class, so I won't break it down here, but Hedu and Hero may be related words. We saw that the tug of war between Thuban and Polaris is the movement of the North Pole from 4000 BC to 2000 AD, from Thuban, the Old North Star, to Polaris. Here's what we see similar to that in Egypt, though they don't have the exact same idea. We have the demonic or the Ashura form, which is Sit, and we have the devil form, which is Horus. We come over here, you can't see this too well, but here is the tortoise, the turtle. And we have the serpent. And we have two forms, kind of hard to see in this image, pulling in Mexico. And here in India, we have Vishnu sitting upon a lotus, which has the serpent wrapped around it. And we have the, uh, the Ashura, or the demonic form, which represents Thuban, which Thuban is the dragon, or the Draco constellation. So the star would be draconic. And we have Polaris, which has the human face. So this is the tug of war between Polaris and Thuban. And the turtle. And the turtle, that's right, and the turtle. The turtle is an amazing thing. We're going to see that, of course, as we look into Vishnu's uh, avatar. Now, the original Sphinx, they believe, was just a full-fledged lion. They, they believe that at some point that uh, the face was carved to a human face, probably in honor of a king. Probably it looked like the image on the left. The original Sphinx may have been a lion and was recarved with a man's face at a later date. It faces east and marked the rise of the constellation Leo during the spring equinox of 10,500 BC. They know that the Sphinx is much older than the pyramids because of the way that the water has worn down upon it. And the amount of water that has worn down upon it, they calculated, would have taken many more years than being uh, created in 2500 BC with the, at the same time as the pyramids. And uh, also, um, also the uh, Leo constellation was rising as one of the uh, precessional equinoxes at 10,500 BC. Remember at 4,000 BC, Taurus is rising, 2,000 BC, Aries is rising, 0 BC, Pisces, the fish is rising. Horus rising from the lotus, a motif also seen in India as Brahma, Brahma rising from the lotus out of Vishnu's navel, and Buddha <coughs> sitting on the lotus. So, this is the basic form, Vishnu sleeping, out of Vishnu's navel comes a lotus, and then Brahma sits here, and then we have, uh, we have figures on both the right and the left. But, if you remember, the Asuras and the Devas pulling against each other. This is the same motif here, except for in that motif we have Vishnu sitting here, and we have Devas on one side pulling on the serpent, Asuras on the other side. The serpent here, is Ananta, this is the serpent upon which Vishnu sleeps. And at his heel, his wife always takes care of his sacred heel. Because remember, the sacred heel is part of the seed of the woman um, prophecy that the heel of the Savior will be bitten by the, by the serpent. Here is a Horus rising out of the lotus. And I don't know if this is Horus or not, but it's a human being, Egyptian, rising out of a lotus. 